This is Dave Bradshaw, and you're listening to Just Bring It, The Nerd Podcast. Hello and welcome to another Just Wing It podcast, like you can hear our English one today. So we have two English speaking guests. Today we have here the actual and current reigning WXW Tech Team Champions, the Eros of Hungary, Icarus and Dova. Hi guys, great to have you here. Thank you. Hi everyone. Hello, thank you for the opportunity. Hello, Alice. How are you? Pretty, pretty good. Decent. Yeah. Everything yeah, we're fun. actually doing really, really good, actually. That's, that's great to hear. So today we would like to talk a little bit about tech team wrestling and your opinions on tech team wrestling and also about you as a tech team. I've seen both of you as a, the whole time as a tech team at WXW, right? I also know that you um, two also work as singles wrestlers. Perhaps... Uh, for example, at uh, Berlin, at GWF, you were in singles wrestling competition against each other sometimes. Yeah. Is it something special to work a feud against each other as a tag team? You know, it's something what sooner or later every promotion is doing, like... Um, I know it's pretty obvious and, you know, it's just something that happens all the time. So um, mm. I don't think it's that special to us because there are many other wrestlers that maybe we had more matches with mm -hmm. than, than each other. So it's, I don't think it's that special to us, to be honest. What do you prefer, singles wrestling or tag team wrestling? Tag team wrestling. Of course, yeah. th that's our specialty. I mean, we are totally focused and we mm -hmm. polished our career, our earning style, our promos, our gear to specializing for tag team wrestling because our product as a tag team is much better than our singles. I mean, that, that's also decent, mm -hmm. like valued brand, our singles, but still like our power is in tag team wrestling for sure. So let's talk about the Tech Team The Arrows of Hungary. How did the first idea of you two becoming a tag team start? Are you friends from your um, from your childhood or how did you two come together? Uh, first we yeah, we of course we grew up together. But we're, first we started as single wrestlers, but because when we founded wrestling in, in Hungary, I mean, new age wrestling, like in the 2010s, it was like a, just a bunch of guys who did wrestling. So we had to wrestle in singles because we had not too many options. But when we started to travel abroad and work around in Europe, then I think the first time was in the Netherlands when we worked together as a tag it was in spain actually in zero one tryout but as a proper tag team with the tag team name yes that, yes it was, yeah that was in the netherlands so like they they came up with the idea so um and we were really happy for that idea did they give you the name of the errors of hungary or was this your idea no it was it was ours because they just always booked us together of course because two hungarians were on the roster of course they're gonna book us together it, it just makes sense and we were like okay if it happens that often maybe we should just take serious so we just came up because hungary has a really rich history more than thousand years old so we got a lot of symbols a lot of stories a lot of really 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 good resources so there's an really ancient wall painting which is basically like dear lord please save us from the arrows of hungarians and that means our nation just went through europe and they just conquered every country so we were like okay maybe this 
old school Hungarian gimmick, this this arrow thingy can can work well. So we just came up with the idea to like a bit modify it, and Arrows of Hungary was just came super handy. That's really interesting. I didn't know about this this kind of connection. That's really interesting. Yeah. I mean, that was one of our main thing that everything, what we do, how we look, how we speak, what we speak has to connect somehow to our roots because that's what makes us special because everybody can now lift or jump or do crazy stuff, but nobody can be that Hungarian, if you know what I mean. So that's what makes us special that we're coming from East Europe, from basically the heart of Europe. It's, it's, a, it's a hidden country, basically, still. And that's what makes special. That's what ignites our fire. Yes, of course. It's really, really special. You are not like everyone else. That's a really special and important thing on your tag team, I guess. What about the really cool masks that you are wearing? This is it's kind of Hungarian mythology. Yeah, of, of course, it's it it was originally against the turkish empire so uh when they tried to invade hungary then these masks were like a trick to like scare the hell out of the turkish okay and, and it worked for days or weeks or i don't know exactly how long but the hungarians just like they Hide it. They they were hiding in the woods in in these masks and scared the shit out of the enemy. So that was that was actually uh, a strategy again. So you come to the ring and use your mask to scare your enemies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Actually. And and we took it off, and it's even more scary. So. <laughs> Now let's talk a little bit more about your characters. Perhaps you can describe to us your two characters, Dover and Icarus. I mean, in even in our tag wrestling, basically, we're we're just ourselves because this is how we live also life. So Dover is a power lifter. He has a power lifting gym. He does all the power stuff. I'm more like a technical guy. If I have to, I do risky stuff. This is also how I live my life. So the idea is just to always go deep down to the source and just make it happen in the ring. Yeah, so I actually, um, the, the difference between us is um, what I do is more simple and like my feet never leaves the ground and what he does is like yeah more more technical more quick more like yeah so it's like basically when people look at us we look the same but different and it's also in our ending style like as a tag team we do a lot of things we which, which like connect and looks the same but we still different also in ring so like it's it's something that we're working on for years so it's like it's uh, it's on a purpose because are you sometimes scared of burning your wings and in the sun <clears throat> yes i mean back in the days when we had to choose names uh we had to came up here in hungary with something catchy so if we would start to wrestle under our real names, it wouldn't catch any eyes. Uh, the thing would be different if we would start our career now, because we would choose like typical Hungarian mythology names or like super standard Hungarian names, even our real names. But back in the days we had to came up with something flashy and yeah, Icarus just came like that because back in the days I was a really skinny guy and I had to amaze the people with a lot of high flying and high risking maneuvers. So I was figuring out that Icarus, the mythology is come also handy that it can represent my style and it just stuck with me because people love to chant and it's also brand build it up on that. Same with Dover. Uh, maybe one day 
we can change it without any consequences. Yes. We we already like we we are thinking about it constantly to change it, but everyone tells us like leave it. People are starting to know us around Europe, so now we just keep it what we don't like it. <laughs> I can understand what you mean, but you have two really short, catchy names that everyone yeah. can remember. So they are good yeah, for, the, still for the actual yeah, time. Yeah, that's true. I know that, uh, especially because you can fly and you showed it to us at the Tech Team Festival. And I'm a little bit scared seeing this. Yeah. Yes, it happened there as well, yes. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's looking really good, but I am I guess it's just me getting old. <laughs> Thank you, I really appreciate it. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I will, we never do anything that we are not like 100% confident mm -hmm. with it. So we just keep it professional. Yes, so... If you look um, like me a little bit more on the details, I can see that it's safe for you. But I'm always a little bit frightened because perhaps there's someone has thrown his uh, cup with beer on the floor and someone is yeah, falling down so he can't catch you. It's a little bit, but I always think you know what you're doing. You're not someone starting half a year ago. No. So let's talk about tech team wrestling. What do you think makes a good tech team? Mm, chemistry, first of all. And I would say tech team psychology and tech team strategy. And if you look at like a, look at it like a fight with with four people, like two on two. If there is a good tech team, then there should be a very proper, mindful strategy behind it. So I think that's that's the most important thing that the the, the whole goal of the team should be using both people and using actually the tag itself. So I think that's the main main thing. Yeah, something special that's sometimes missed. Yeah, where where you look, some in some Western leagues, you don't really need to tag. It's everything at the same time. So, but that's really really important things that you're talking about. What about tag team moves? You have a lot of really special tag team moves. Is this important for tag team? It's important to have something for your own your own finishing move as the singles wrestler. I mean, yes, of course, it's part of tag team wrestling, and I think. It's one of the most exciting thing to figure out good action, which also looks good, but it's also effective. So it has to mean something. Everything you do in the ring has to mean something. And I think, especially in tag team wrestling, it's like all eyes on you, what you do and why are you doing it? So, of course, we just start to polish our stuff and we keep grinding on it. We're still coming up with new ideas or, or just modifying current ones we always keep in touch with like tommy and gabriel angel fire also coach dry sticker so we have a lot of help we have a lot of support and of course we constantly just keep watching a lot of footages from every uh, like even from japan or from america or even from europe like where to go what to do what's good what not what the people like what we liking because that's that's another thing that a lot of tech team has a lot of crazy moves and a lot of super spots, but their matches doesn't mean anything. And I mean, it's just not our cup of tea, but if the people likes it, then it's relevant. So we good with it. We just don't want to go that way. We really prefer like, for example, the revival way to, to work around the rules, to work around the opportunities and basically our moves are, are more focused on opportunities and finding the gap where we can put them. 
you're not the first take team telling me the revival way is the way you like to work there are a lot of your colleagues that really like this way of the real like old school take team wrestling protecting your partner looking to separate the opponents and something else it seems to be a thing at the moment again <laughs> long time there was always just spot on spot on spot in some in some promotions you still have this but in the for example wxw you have a lot of the old school wrestling take team way at the moment it's really interesting the change let's look back into your wrestling history you told before that you have a tryout i heard and your first real take team match what was what was your first real Tag team match. Yeah, if if we can, uh, uh, if if we call that one a real tag match, that was in uh, Barcelona, and we did uh, a tryout for uh, zero one. And at the end of the tryout camp, there was a show, and there was uh, there were four of us from Hungary. So we were booed as a tag team, like two on two, and we we worked as a team there, and it was yeah, it was pretty funny and interesting, I guess. So and and a couple of weeks after that, we started to work as a team in the Netherlands. So it it happened really quick. Yes, well, it was it was a pretty, pretty funny experience. Fast way to get into business, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So what was your feeling before starting the first tag team match? Were you nervous or was it just a day, another day at work? How was it for you? Um, we already know each other because we started wrestling together here in Hungary with the other two guys. So we already know like what to do and how to do. Uh, I wouldn't say that it was like a tag team wrestling how I would wrestle now, of course, because it was almost like nine years ago eight years ago uh but comparing uh to the circumstances uh which is our knowledge our in-ring abilities our everything comparing to all those things it was a really fun match and i just watched it back like a year ago or something and i was like yeah okay i i remember it was it was much worse but it, actually it was cool we got the chemistry we did we got the reaction um so i think it was a good start and we just realized that yeah of course it can work so basically every other step just came natural because we didn't force anything and i think it's one of the major key that we don't force things we just try and if it's not working we just leave it are you able to rewatch, like you said rewatch your matches without thinking oh god what did what have i done five years ago that's uh, like it's always the first thing what we do after our matches like we go back we have a shower we eat something and we sit down and watch our matches back we always we always record it and we always tell this to our students that always have someone recording your match because that's that's the one thing you can learn the most like, you, watch you it back and immediately criticize yeah. yourself you can see what went good, what went not that yes. good. Yes. That's always good to go this way. I know this from, I'm, I'm working as kind of a teacher. And with some of my um, students, I did this for presentations. Recording mm -hmm. them, we watched them to see what is good, what's not good. Perfect. So, yes. There you go. I same, guess. Same, same in lifting. I, I, I always record my lifts from from the front, from the side, mm -hmm. I'm watching my knees, my ankles, my back, my elbow. Always really like professional. It, it's something, something that we have now in the 2020s. So why not using it for our own development? So it's like it's it, it's a tool that our forefathers didn't have, but it can help a lot. So why not? Yeah, of course, of course. Let's you you always uh, mind your colleagues in Hungary, your students. Let's leave the tag team division a little bit and talk about names, persons that we should have an eye on from Hungary 
for the next years. Who do you think? Uh, like WXW w- w- got already some of them, like Peter Tihani. Hmm? Uh, he, he will blow up definitely. Guyash Jr., he's, he's just amazing. Now Iva Kolaski, just making waves in the women's division. I would say like Tamash Sabo called Nitro. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure like he's a hidden gym and in, in Europe. So, so I'm pretty sure that especially now he works regularly in Passion Pro, uh, which is one of our projects. And I'm pretty sure now he will work with some of the names who can like spread the word about him. Also, there's Maverick who has this lizard gimmick uh mainly in in hungary and in like austria um also who like we we got a lot of talents they are still like in development way but there's a show called hcw underground it's hungarian championship wrestling's own uh, weekly show it's free on youtube and mm-hmm. if you just hit it up, you can see a lot of talents coming up and coming and a lot up, of, of course. A lot of content. So it's like really a weekly show for two or three years now. Yes. A lot, and, of, a lot of names. And basically, you just can pick your favorite there because that's why it's out there for free. Yeah, I guess I will add this to our podcast description or video description so that everyone can look inside their look. Who's coming next to our big wrestling market, perhaps? Well, thanks for names, and you already mentioned Passion Pro, so let's make another step outside of tech team wrestling. Tell us something about Passion Pro. Passion Pro is uh, our very, very uh, newest project. Basically, we try to collect the very best from Europe and also outside Europe, if we have the opportunity to to bring uh, outside talents. And we try to um, also show to the world or Europe, whatever you want, uh, the Hungarian talents. So like a lot of people can work together who maybe never met each other or met each other and like each other, but never worked together. So uh, we try to we, we try to make a, a very fun environment where a lot of good talents just making their best and no no really long storylines and no uh, not not a, cl- a classic European or like you know it's 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 more like pro wrestling guerrilla in the US but mm-hmm. more in Europe so that's that's the the atmosphere for that so it's um it's one for showcasing the talent of hungary second making a, a new platform to work for mm-hmm. and third for having fun it's more like know the wrestler don't uh, don't just know the story right yeah yeah Pretty interesting. You already had, I guess, two shows. The yes. Passion Pro Cup was the first, I guess. Hi, Paul Hatot Kichit. Yes, it was like Passion Pro Cup. It was a two night event. And okay. it, it was a tournament and it's mm-hmm. free on YouTube, also with English commentary. That's why we put it out to people who get to know us. Of course, you will have a lot of familiar faces from DubXDub because. We have a lot of help and support from the Bags Up. It's not a secret. Uh, we are, Why we are having, you? yeah, right. But it's it's like even our referees are from the Bags Up. So so we try to to make something which is really about passion. So it's one of the rules. I mean, it's not a rule, but it's kind of like a one hundred and one that people who's in that locker room uh has the passion for professional wrestling Mm -hmm. and now we just just published like a few minutes ago uh the passion pro 2 
which was our third show, if you see, but like that was our second show. Mm -hmm. And it was really huge. It was really amazing. We got this kind of like this dirty illegal fight club mm -hmm. gimmick for this whole show. It's really underground. It's really nasty, but also, of course, it's quality and it's clean. But like our main event was Tistan Archer versus X Men, which happened yeah. first time ever. That's nice. So, one. yeah, we had the privilege and we just really want to have put together like really fun cards that our people are like, okay, I don't know wrestling, but oh, wow, this is, oh, wow, I want to watch it. So the highlight is out. It's on YouTube, Instagram, mm -hmm. Twitter. You can find out at Passion Pro, Passion Pro Wrestling. Just easily go give a follow and let us know what you think because we're really eager to hear all the feedbacks about our product so we can work on it. Yes, of course. We will also add this to the description so you can find all of Passion Pro as well. Thank you. So let's go back to Take Two. Like you said, you're working together with WXW. Like I said before, why not? I guess it's the best way in Europe to work together. We are a small group of wrestling, wrestling fans, wrestling promotions. So that's not the best way to work against each other. Better, better work together to build something special, something good. And like you're doing is the best way. Let's talk about your time with WXW. How did your first connection with WXW start? Uh, I don't know if uh, anybody in, I hope that anyone who were uh, watching this podcast has already watched the, the video of us talking about it in during We Love Wrestling. But actually that whole video is true. Mm. Our story with WXW is, I don't know exactly if it's seven or eight years long, but that was always a place where we wanted to go. And, and even when we were just super green and didn't know anything about wrestling in Europe and independent wrestling, we, the first thing that we, we had in our mind as a, as a goal for a next level was WXW. So, yeah. story. Yeah. So, uh, because like after Gabriel Angel Fire from the Netherlands started to like coaching us, mm -hmm. uh, we met Tommy End and he became our mentor. So he put us under his wings, and of course he was like already a roster member in the Dub. And we started to train with him. We started to travel out to the Netherlands just to train with him. And he also told us that, yeah, guys, this is where you have to go if you want to do something with wrestling. And if you have serious goals, you have to come here. And we started working on it. And at one point in 2015, uh, there was like an anniversary tour for WXW. And they came to Prague, Czech Republic. And because we were in the neighbors, like we somehow came in contact with them and some of our HCW guys just came over to pray and they because filled up the card. And because, also, yeah. oh no, that was the second one, right? The, the, the second seminar was the first one that was yeah. a seminar with Tom Pritchard. And, yeah. and, and we went for that seminar and we were hoping True. for getting on the card, mm -hmm. but True. it obviously never happened in that year. Mm -hmm. But the year after, that was the seminar with Nigel McGuinness. Oh, and then yeah. that, that, that was the time where some of us was on the card. Yes, true. And like, basically, like, long story short, our performance wasn't on on that level that WXW needed. I mean, we, we weren't bad, just it, we, we, we weren't ready. That's, that's the truth. And... Um, we just started to keep working and working and working. We never got anything from the Dub back. So we basically thought that we're okay, we're done. We just disappeared okay. mm -hmm. and nobody cared about us. But we still kept going and grinding and we still keep knocking on the door like, hey, here we are. If you have like something for us, we're happy to work here, etc. etc. Nothing happened. So we just went out and uh, 
I went to the academy mm -hmm. for a week and we had like private lessons with Walter, some match analyzing and also with Mike Bailey, AJ. So a lot of names work with us. And they were like, okay, let's just give you guys a shot on some town shows. So we just got in a loop. And from that point, we got some opportunities. And every time we got back, it was the same situation. We work, we work, we work, go to the tech titles and go. Then disappearing. Then coming back, working, working, go to the tech titles, nothing disappearing. And after a while, we were like, okay, like what's going on? Like we already had main events. We already made good impressions, for example, like tech festivals, like, like we just kept like writing emails, like, okay, we know it's, it's much harder to fly two guys in from Europe. It's, it's, it's much worse than fill up a car with a lot of German talents. Mm -hmm. We know exactly, but what can we do to make it worth? Like, how can we be like a, a real draw? And they were like, just keep working. And we did. And Yeah, yeah, some, so, uh, a little bit freezing at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it, it's okay. Just yeah, so oh, I think I think the, the main thing the main thing was if 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 we talk about our success here is that anytime there was there was something that didn't happen or or went wrong or something like that we we never we never asked like why not but we we always ask like how can we mm -hmm. and and we had always we always got feedbacks and we always got stuff and and yeah like that there was like one point where we had a very good year also in england and germany and whatever we had like a lot of matches everywhere and a year after we had like a half of bookings than that okay and 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 we again asked like Tommy that like how should we think about it? How should we look at it? What should we do? And and yeah, that was the point where he he when he said that okay guys, you're doing great. Just keep pushing. Like you can't do anything else. Do what you do. Just stay on that track, and things will happen. And yeah, we, we did that. And like two or three years later. Now we are on WXW shows regularly. And you are the reigning WXW Tag Team Champion. So I guess you did something really, really good to get there. I think hard work just pays off. Basically, mm -hmm. we're the example of it. And of course, this is our like highest milestone ever in our career. And we kept chasing it. And I still thinking it's it's amazing because it just opened up a new chapter because it's one thing to be a contender, but to be a champion, that's a whole nother game. So so there's always something that we can improve and we can work on it. And it's super exciting and it's super amazing. And we're just just super happy that that we finally finally get here and we can finally work even more and even harder. And you don't just had the short way to the title title, but you had a really nice told story. Going into a tournament, falling out of the tournament, going against the tag team champions, losing at the tag team champions, and trying again and again. Was this the throwback on your time to get to WXW a little bit? I think I think yeah, that was it it, it really fit to our to our personal life and to our story with WXW. So um, if I look look back on it, like it's 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 pretty pretty good storyline, I think. So that was like that was a really smart build up to our tech title win, actually. Yes, of course. And how long before the title match you get to know that you will be the next champions? How was this feeling for you to know? you will get the WXW Tag Team Championship. I mean, it. We, we had some meetings and some video calls before the tapings. And, you know, as it like in pro wrestling, like nothing is sure, nothing is 100%. So you, we you were, can't yeah. say anything, yeah, right? So yeah, it we was... Were, yeah, yeah we, were, we were like, 
okay, okay, okay. Wait until the day it happened. So don't don't I understand be this, yeah. you can you can never know, especially with us. Yeah. I can that's, totally yeah, understand. Yeah, that's one of our special skills. <laughs> but you did it. You just went the whole way. You didn't get any injury on the way that something that happened can also happen. In no. such tapings, we saw it with different wrestlers, and you got all the way to the championship. How was this feeling at the moment you know now we are the WXW Tag Team Champions? I mean, we rarely got emotional, but basically one of the rare uh, like situations where we can get emotional is with wrestling. Like including wrestling and i think that that was the point when we were like okay we arrived and just just it was i mean i can like explain exactly like detailed because you can explain feelings but it was something like okay now we arrived and now the real hard work begins so it was kind of like just just finishing a chapter in your life and mm -hmm. opening a new one and the excitement that, that that you will open a brand new chapter is one of the best feelings ever. And I hope there's a long way for the Aeros of Hungary as the WXW champions. Let's talk about your time with WXW in highlights. When you have to point out two highlights each, what are your highlights with WXW? Ooh. I would don't, say don't have to be always uh, just your your matches or something else. The highlights that you had in WXW. Um, if uh, I think one of our highlights in our career, a very uh, a very memorable uh, story or a very memorable day, is when we had a seminar or training with uh, Brookside mm. in the mm. in the academy, like. I still remember there was it, it was it was like a pre tryout for the WWE trial. And that was a training, and and we were just like listening to Brookside for thirty minutes, like he would just keep talking and talking about wrestling and passion and stuff like that. And we went back to our room. We were just sitting in silence for another thirty minutes. I was like just looking like shit, like it was Brookside, <laughs> like <laughs> teaching yeah. us and working together and like we are so close to the very professionals and I, I think that was the very first time when we felt that okay maybe we are getting to the professional level like when like we felt that okay now maybe what we are doing is serious so I it's really really uh, a professional thing I think that's one and obviously the, the, the tech title win but besides that I think the tech team festival itself, like like both days, I think that was that was really a really big experience where where we were able to showcase ourselves mm. to the German crowd. Something special at such a festival, or yes. for you? Isn't it really exhausting to the body to have such a festival in short days after each other? I mean, that's what we train for. That's what we want to do. The tapings now, when we did the Villa Wrestling tapings in this COVID situation, without crowd and like having like two and three matches per day for days, that was exhausting. But still, we felt like, okay, I mean, yeah, this is what we train for. This is what we're here for. So, so no, I would say... It's it's funny, but mentally it's more draining because you really have to be sharp and hundred percent focusing mm -hmm. on what you do. Yeah, yeah, I understand this. So we talked a lot about your time with WX7. Let's talk about your opinion of wrestling. First, I would like to know if you look back on your career in tag team wrestling since today, what's your favorite match that you had in your Tag team wrestling time. Hmm. You mean oh. I, if may, may, maybe, uh, maybe I can 
maybe I say two or three, and then Icarus can say okay. two. I think there are pretty. I'm not sure it's going to be the same. Uh, obviously, we wrestled one time with Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn. Oh. That was a very good experience. Looking back on it, we could have been better and doing things different, but like in that circumstances, that was a very good one. And I think it, it had really um, good feedbacks and big numbers by viewers and stuff like that. So it, that was a really in, important one. Uh, I had a very... Uh, very um how should i say like as as a fan of our stuff like we had a match in gwf actually in berlin mm -hmm. against mike and rumble oh okay mm -hmm. and um before the match we didn't think that it's gonna be that good but looking back to it it was like the whole crowd was chanting for icarus when he were under control. They react. They reacted for for the comeback and the fire and the story. So I think that was a really good one. I I cannot tell why, but uh, I really enjoyed it. Looking back on it, and of course uh, the match we we had with Anil and Coach Dreisker was was a really smart match. I guess everything was in point and everything everything was into it so i would say these three matches you yeah yeah i totally agree i would just add uh two matches uh one with our first match with the samirian death squad oh yeah be sure. because sure. that was that was that was like clearly a milestone yeah, and made made sure that yeah we want to go this way and yeah we were much smaller and we were much greener but we kept up the tempo and they were like, okay, maybe you guys can make it. So it was also really good feedback mm -hmm. that we were in a good way. And the other one was the Arrows of Hunger debut match in Amsterdam against uh, uh, the Hard Rocking Incorporation and Paul oh. London and Brian Kendrick. Oh, oh. <laughs> And also there was Lloyd Pengel and Kid Lux as well. So it was like a turbulence four-way. But mm -hmm. to work with Paul London and Brian Kendrick, and they were like super easy. And yeah, you guys have a lot of awesome stuff. And we were like, oh wow, we just we just working with that. It just <laughs> it just sticked with me. Yeah, it sounds really interesting. I would like to see that if you could in any place, but I don't I, know. I think it's on Pro Wrestling Holland's yes. YouTube channel, or maybe yeah, a highlight. But but something is up there. Ah, okay. So uh, I have to link this too. So. You can look back on your history a little bit, perhaps. Why not? So let's get to the more global topic. Let's talk about your top five tag teams. Which tag teams? Global Wrestling, Europe, America, Japan. Which are your top five tag teams? Obviously, we talked about already about the revival. That one, uh, I would say the Young Bucks in the second place because of their popularity. I think because they also worked their asses off to get to that point. And also because, because of course there is Cody Rhodes, but I think the whole brand right now, just like the Young Bucks mm -hmm. were able to, to build up a very very big promotion through their popularity so i think that's that's pretty huge and they did it as a team mm -hmm. so i think that that's why maybe the second anyone else yeah definitely big influences the dudley boys and the hardy boys it's pretty obvious uh we were really big hardy boys fans back then when we started uh still got some glimpse sometimes in our work uh, kind of like a take nod to them. Uh, well, of course, some sometimes it's weird, but like Japanese tech teams like Kanta Kobashi and Kenta was a funny one because you know that it, it's going to be always good. 
Yes. I wouldn't say like regular tech teams because in Japan it's it's kind of like hard to say that. Yeah. But still, that that always makes me smile because when watching back like old school Noah, it's it's always fun. Also, uh, if, if sorry, yeah. uh, if if I have to pick someone from our generation, I will say the Mustache Mountain. They are really, really enjoyable to watch. Mm-hmm. Pretty smart wrestling. Pretty good ideas. Always entertaining. I I, I enjoy watching them actually, and it's. Nowadays, it's really, really rare that I'm really enjoying every minute of a match, and 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 they and they are really often doing that. So, yes, of course. Of course, there is like Midnight Express and all these classics, but we really want to avoid cliches. So mm-hmm. that's why we're like picking out those those themes that has the influence or something else that outside of the box. Mm-hmm thinking of course for example like the midnight experience they were like way ahead before daytime like way ahead but it's you know it's kind of like obvious that yeah. we're gonna say that so that's why we were picking this yeah it's a good a good choice a lot of really interesting tech interests some kind of totally different styles in this and like you said the ones with the time are kind of transplanting or, or showing the characters the other ones are kind of resting. They're so much different in tag team wrestling, and you bring something special as well with you. So you have to be different to be something special, I guess. So let's talk about your dreams. Who would you like to compete against? I would I would say the Young Bucks again, because if you if you want to be relevant as a tag team nowadays. You have to work with the young box at some point, some way, somehow. I think it's really, it's a, it's a prestigious thing if you can work with the young box. Um, and and I think these like also the revival is the same thing. I'm not sure it's gonna happen ever, but, but you can never know. But yeah. never never seen ever, of course. But I would I would pick. Two, these two teams yeah i would say like mustache mountain because we already like booked them up and it's a really funny one but i would say we have to go another round with oc open because hmm. hmm. <laughs> because uh, uh, we had a match in revolution pro ref pro in uk back then uh the outcome of the match was was really enjoyable and watchable, uh, but working wise, it was um, how how could I say it, it? It was weird, like how the whole match came up, how the booking. So so everything with Ref Pro was was a, was a bit out of our comfort zone. This was the first time we were going to UK, so we were like preparing to a total different environment and i would say i'm I'm not saying we weren't ready but now i would say it it, it would worth a shot to work with them again because we're on a total different level they are also on a total different level and and i think yeah it it would be something else this time yeah i think if if you look at it as as like a, like working wise, you can you can tell that we were the newcomers and they were the local guys, and you can we 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 were feeling it during the match, and I think if you are really into wrestling and you have a lot of knowledge about wrestling, you can tell when you watch it. Of course, yes, the match was enjoyable and wasn't that bad, but like knowing that that it was the OC Open and there was a Hungary match, mm. we, we we'd like to redo and and do it with our knowledge, with our current knowledge, and with our current like you know mm, confidence. Yeah, confidence. Yeah. yeah, that could be a real nice one. I can see this perhaps 
after the whole corona time in a WXW ring. Aussie Open were there for a longer time. It was a nice time with them. I guess it would be nice to see you both fight against them. And uh, at the moment, I would say uh, defeat them as well. For sure. <laughs> so let's talk about what we can do to get you more, to, to help you a little bit on your way inside wrestling. We also talked about we can follow Passion Pro. If we are near the place you are producing, you are doing the shows, we can get to the shows. We can watch them on YouTube, we can follow on all social media. But we can also help you with watching WXW to make you more known, talk about you. And we can help you with your with buying your merch. Where can we get your merch? Yes, it's on SL Wrestling. So you can uh, find it there and anywhere else. Yeah, at the merch table, of course, when everything's coming back. But yeah, currently at SL Wrestling, we're producing also like limited stuff because the English print is only on SL Wrestling. So we're we're thinking about like like directly to the to the german fans because mm -hmm. we know that even our forefathers back then like arpad weber and uh tibor sakaj they went to the uk but one of their main step was always germany mm -hmm. so hungarian wrestlers always went to germany first and some of them stood there some of them went to the uk but germany is a really important place for us and we wrestled more than 14 countries now like like really in a lot and we're still like at the end of the day we're like okay we belong in into germany so so german fans and german environment german promotions and especially now dubex dub is super important for us i i i, I would say it's, it's the number one priority for us it's great to hear so we will have a lot of time with you i hope i hope we will see a lot of errors of hungry matches in the future we too. Okay. Thank you too that you have been here. It was a pleasure to talk to you and to have a look into your history. Thank you, Pralis. Well, <laughs> Vielen Dank. And I hope to Vielen see Dank. you back here. Perhaps sometimes down the road we will talk again about what happened to him there. Perfect. So for our listeners, this were the Eros of Hungary, the current WXW Tag Team Champions. You see you soon, guys. Cheers. Cheers.